Hello everybody, this is Niklas Huschmidt and we are having another Patron match against Aka Pop Tarts. This is the third one and my opponent already has played his first move C4 so I don't want to let him wait. It's 10 minutes each so it gives me a lot of time to talk during the game and to explain my thoughts, my ideas and also of course with this particular format there's a lot of emphasis on what my opponent is doing because my opponent is supporting me on patreon.com and as one of the rewards for supporting me he plays this match against me and I really want to take the time here and also after the game to analyze the game in depth and point out any any things that I noticed during the game. Alright, so actually this is a position I had in a game recently and in, in that recent game I played e6 instead of knight c6 and it's important to play knight c6 to stop white from playing d4. And now I play e6 because I want to develop my knight to e7. Rook e1 is a move I'm not familiar with and I'm not quite sure what his intention is at this point because well e4 didn't need to be supported right now right white well, could have played e4 anyway regardless of the rook on f1 or e1 now i think i'm going to play d6 because i'm a little bit hmm, am i afraid of e5 Probably I'm not afraid of e5. So I, I might as well just castle. I was I was just looking at e5, but then I can just react with b6. And white cannot keep this pawn on e5 and would be left with a weak pawn on the d fund. In general, this is the problem here for white in a way that this square on d4 is quite weakened, right? You can see why this moved the pawns to c4 and e4, so it means both pawns cannot control the square on d4 anymore. Alright, now a3, hinting and maybe possibly later going b4. And I think I'm just going to react in the center now. It seems to make a lot of sense. White has played a lot of pawn moves and has not finished development yet, right? The knight on b1 still, the bishop on c1. Well, I have developed as many pieces as I could, I guess, and now I'm opening up the way for the bishop as well. So black can take on d5 again, I would take back with the knight. And you can see all my pieces um, come out quite naturally. And it seems I have a little lead in development, queen c2 hitting the pawn on c5, I can just react with b6. That would make a lot of sense probably to just go b6 here. But I'm just looking at moves like knight d4 could be an option, right? But sometimes the simplest, the simplest is also the best. You know, let me look at d takes e4, hold on, why not d takes e4? That's also pretty simple and I think pretty strong as well. White needs to take back with the queen. If the rook takes e4 after pin. Oh there it is, the pin on the on this diagonal. And I'm winning the exchange here. Alright, d3. So now I probably need to take this one right away. But you always want to check if there's anything better in the position, right? But it looks like here I should just take, I was looking at c4. It looks fancy, but why I can just take with the queen and I don't see any, any advantage to doing it. So I'll just take. And now, let's see, knight d4 comes to mind. So I'm up in exchange, but of course the game is not over, right? 
So you still want to remain precise and uh, find, find good moves. Um, all right. I'll just play hmm, rook c8. I'll just play rook c8 for now. It's kind of a waiting move. I want to see how white uh, puts out a piece. And after knight c3, now my idea was to go knight d4 now. Because now white cannot take really on d4 because of c takes d4 and the knight is pinned. That's why I put my rook on c8. So queen d1, move the queen out of the way. Hmm. Unfortunately, this still works for white, kind of. This still kind of works. So let me move my queen out of the way. I move my queen to b6. And this looks like a good good square for the queen. On the one hand, I'm having an eye on this pawn on b2. I'm getting out of the way so I can prepare rook f d8. <clears throat> also, if knight takes d4, I'm considering to take back with the bishop and then the queen is also on this diagonal here, on the a7 g1 diagonal. And I can possibly put on some pressure on this pawn on f2. So right now, knight b3 might be a threat. So probably white needs to take here on d4. Otherwise, yeah, I go knight b3, I go rook d8. Except for maybe bishop g5 would be possible. Bishop f1 is a little bit surprising. So I can play rook fd8, but... <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, did I just blunder? No, I did not blunder, but I was close. I almost overlooked knight a4, but I still have queen e6. Probably. Actually, well, you know what? We'll look at this in the post-mortem analysis. That's how it's called. After the game, I will look at this. But knight a4 looked like a really interesting try. And could be that I messed up there. But we'll check this out later. All right, now rook f d8. I'm bringing bringing another piece into action, hitting the queen on d1. Queen has to move to c2 or e2. That's pretty much given. And now that was actually important. After queen e2, I think there was a tactic, and we'll also look at this later. But now I can probably just move back to d4. Once again, same point, knight takes d4, c takes c4, and white is pinned on the c file, so queen d1 is probably forced. And now the question is, how can I improve from here? How can I improve, guys? Haha, <laughs> not that easy actually to, to kind of deliver the final blow. It feels like there should be something here, but I can't really, I don't see it. I don't see it yet. Alright then, so we don't want to spend too much time, obviously. So I'll just play a move like queen f6. Yeah, surprisingly I didn't see any direct win, really. So I will just keep playing on with my extra exchange. But obviously white can still fight. And the game is not over yet. Alright, now obviously I'm threatening to take on f3, 
So white either needs to protect the knight or take on d4. Protects the knight. But now I think... <clears throat> Mm -mm, hold on, knight b5, knight d5. But I think I have a good move then. So knight b5 hitting the queen, right? And also hitting the the pawn on c3, or the knight right on c3. But if queen c2, then I'm going to win the pawn with knight takes c3, b takes c3, queen takes c3. So knight e5 is what I expect what I'm expecting. And here I think queen f5 is a double attack against the rook and the pawn on d5. And I should be able to pick this one up on d5. Now that's quite important. This pawn, if it was to stay there, it would be still annoying because the bishop on g2 could protect it. And hmm, maybe it is going to stay there. I missed this move. I missed this move. Let me put on some more pressure here. Bishop d4 hitting the pawn f2. So let's see. Queen f3. And now I can win this pawn after all. Now I think I can win this pawn. Because if queen takes, then queen takes f2 and queen g1 is checkmate. And if queen takes f5, I take back with the rook. Let me pre-move this and bishop h3 should be a problem because if rook takes f2 and that should be should be pretty good. I mean white would be able to win back the exchange after bishop takes c8 and then rook takes d2 check, but my position is just absolutely superior at that point. So that's fine. Probably g4, okay. g4. Mm -hmm. Okay, do I, do I need to exchange or do I have anything else here, guys? Nah, I need to exchange and I need to play a little bit quicker. Um, all right, so let's protect this one. Or do we need to protect this one? Maybe not. Maybe rook e5 is also fine because there are some tactics. If he takes on b7, I can play rook b8 and then knight takes a3. Or knight. Oh, hold on. The rook is defended on b1, but still this could work. Also, I'm having the idea to bring my rook to the first rank here. Knight e4. Now, I am tempted to play f5. I mean, if this works, it would be very strong. And I think it does work. Because I want to get my rook to e1. And that would be an annoying pin on the first rank for my opponent. Takes, takes. Now, knight f6, f king f7. Okay. Oh, now bishop g5, maybe. Bishop g5 is defending the knight. Hmm. Maybe I can play f4 then, something like this. Yeah, bishop g5. Hmm. What about... Okay, let me play rook e6. To attack this knight, bishop d5 is not a problem. I can just take an f6. 
and bishop h5 I go to g7 of course my opponent could probably move the knight but knight d5 I have rook g8 and pinning the bishop on g5 so probably bishop h5 check first because here yeah this is just an extra piece now um, so here this is over So now I need to convert. Let me play f4, maybe I'm gonna get f3 in. And uh, create some mating ideas, possibly. So I get f3 in. It doesn't look like I'm gonna mate anytime soon here. Unfortunately, the, the king is escaping. So I might switch to another strategy, which is just exchanging the rook. And he has avoided that. Let me activate my rook and I'm going for this f2 pawn now. And then this f3 pawn should be pretty quick. And you can have all of those pawns on the seventh rank because, well, his pawns are not going to be fast enough. And this pawn is going to be very fast. indeed actually unstoppable all right we want to be precise <laughs> not queen yet but maybe move the king back and go to g5 And now f1 queen should should come. All right, and my opponent resigned. Okay, so I will go over this game now, and see what was going on. So the opening phase, pretty normal, I would say here, white usually either plays knight c3 or e3 or maybe e4 right away. Rook e1 is a move I wasn't too familiar with and I think it's not necessary at this point. Um, a general rule of thumb is to first develop all your minor pieces and then move the rocks or move the heavy pieces right that's the general rule of thumb so knight c3 is the main line here knight g7 and then d3 or e3 again is also possible it's just different e3 d4 and now many many ways to play oftentimes white pursues a plan with a3 and rook b1 bishop d2 and while black's playing something like d5 i always thought it's pretty comfortable here for black but still it's played quite often by white all right so rook e1 knight e7 e4 castle and now a3 once again i would say that it was about time to develop a knight um, before playing any more pawn moves right you want to make sure your pieces are in the play before you maybe expand on the queen side So my opponent is saying he saw the pin with the bishop early in the game, but he still made a mistake. And we'll get to this in just a moment. And also, 
He saw a move where he could have won my bishop, but instead he moved his rook. And I'm not sure yet what he means by that, but maybe we'll find out along the way. Well, in fact, I will just ask him, how about that? All right, so here knight c3, like I said, would, would have been more natural. And also now, for example, I can't really play d5 because well, I could just take everything and then play knight d5, maybe take on c6. And that looks fairly decent for white. Um, so a3, now I decide to play in the center right away, which is which makes a lot of sense, right? If your opponent is still a little bit underdeveloped, then it makes sense to play in the center and try to open it up and you can make use of um, you can use, make use of the fact that your opponent is not quite in the game yet with his pieces. All right, and my opponent just told me what which moment he thought it was, and we'll get to this in a moment. So queen c2 here. Maybe it would be a good idea to try to keep it closed here with e5, uh, because once again, being underdeveloped, that might be a good course of action. But here, I could. Play bishop g4, go for the e5 pawn. Yeah, in fact, bishop g4 looks strong. And white has immediate problems with this pawn, so maybe not the best option. Maybe just taking on d5 and then playing knight c3, but once again, black's controlling the center. Um, bishop can go to f5. This pawn on d2 is a problem, a weakness. Um, So this is also very comfortable for black. So queen c2, let's focus on the game. D takes e4 and now queen takes e4 was necessary, but even then white is definitely already in some trouble here. Bishop f5, the queen needs to move somewhere, let's say h4. This looks very comfortable. I could even imagine a move like knight, well knight a5 is not possible because the knight on e7 is same. But even parking the bishop on d3, something like this, and white has huge problems to even finish the development, especially with the bishop on c1. So this is quite, quite good for black already. So rook takes e4, bishop f5, d3, takes, takes, rook c8. Now knight c3 really runs into this knight d4, which wasn't that bad, but hmm, maybe developing the bishop first would have been an alternative. So now white could always just take, and if I take with the pawn, just go to d3. And of course, in all of these variations, black's still better. Um, but white can try to block and and hang on here. All right, so knight c3, knight d4, queen d1, queen b6, now bishop f1. I was expecting knight takes d4 here, really. Knight takes d4, c takes d4, knight d5. Well, this was one possible variation. Here, it's still not that easy to get through. Of course, black is better with being an exchange up, but this pawn is protected on d5, and I won't get rid of it anytime soon. Right? So, in fact, I was also looking at bishop takes d4. Maybe this is better uh, to have this option maybe to go with c4, put on some pressure on this pawn on f2. In general, the bishop is much more active on d4, also keep an eye on b2. Um, so now knight e5, that would be a different story here. c4, 
threatening f2, threatening to take on b2. I think this is this is a better better way to play. Uh, so maybe after bishop takes c4, white will need to move to queen. Okay. And still, obviously, work to be done here for black, but very good chances. Alright, so bishop f1, now knight b3. This is the move my opponent was talking about, and this might have been a mistake um, because of a knight a4. But I think there should be a way out here for me. I'm hoping at least. One move I'm looking at right now is rook fd8. Kind of a counter attack against the queen. Now maybe white. Oh no, queen c2 runs into knight takes a1 suddenly, hitting the queen once again. So rook fd8 would be the saving move, I'm pretty, pretty sure. If bishop d2, now queen e6 is just possible. Because now after knight g5, I can just, well, just move to queen. And if queen takes b3, I can take on d2. So that's the difference to playing queen e6 right away. Here, where I can play knight g5. Even here, rook fd8 is still maybe possible or maybe not. Maybe here, what can take and take on e6. But even this looks really good for black because of rook d1 is coming and even this looks winning for black yeah so a little scary moment for me after knight b3 but knight a4 doesn't seem to work because of this intermediate move rook fd8 either here or one move later apparently both look like working either here or after queen e6, knight g5, rook fd8 and black is still winning. Alright, so rook b1, rook fd8, queen c2. I want to point out is here after queen e2, I think black has a nice little combination which is bishop takes c3 and now knight d4. Point being that after rook takes b6, black takes on e2 with check and then takes back on b6 and is up two exchanges now and well doesn't look like white has any other moves here if the queen goes over here then you can just take an f3 and now queen f6 or knight e1 um, just up a whole rook uh, so there seems nothing to be here N no way to to hold this uh, this of course is also Winning for black. So queen c2, good. Now I played knight d4 back. Queen d1 back, and here I was looking for one minute, 14 seconds. Couldn't find a convincing continuation. Um, I was looking for a brief moment at this, but first it looks good, right? To bring the rook to the first rank, pin the bishop, but look, watch out. Watch out, gotta be careful here. Counter tactic. Bishop h6 is a true uh, true killer blow here. Threatening, check me on g7. So, yeah, before you give up your strong bishop on g7, you really have to make sure that it's a good continuation. Then I couldn't find a decent way to play on. Maybe something like c4 here. Not sure. Yeah, I play queen f6, which is fine. Now bishop g2. Now knight b5. I think works well. So maybe instead of bishop g2, white should take on d4 now. But here, in fact, yeah, I could even take with the pawn. I didn't realize this during the game. But now white doesn't have knight d5. I can just take twice. And if the knight goes to e2, I have d3 probably. Uh, this looks pretty... Pretty good at first sight. Uh, I don't know about second sight because now this pawn d3 is hanging.
My intuition is telling me this is good, but I'm not sure yet. Queen d4 pinning the bishop, but bishop d3, but probably something like g5 here. Bishop e3, hoo hoo hoo. This is more complicated than I would like it to be. Um, but okay, I don't need to play d3 here. Um, I can also play something like queen c6, maybe aiming to play queen c2, hitting this pawn on e4. Yeah, looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. So yeah, it's just, white is just an exchange down, so all of these variations always are going to lead pretty much to a loss for white sooner or later. Alright, so let's keep looking here, bishop d2, knight b5. And if white plays queen c2 now, I will just take everything off and I'm up another pawn. Uh, not another pawn, I'm up an exchange and a pawn, so that's that's a lot. And I have this pass pawn on c5 and I'm winning. So knight d5 and now my whole pawn was queen f5 hitting the rook and the pawn on d5. And knight d2 defending both, right? But of course this is a little bit ugly blocking the bishop on c1. And now I just played bishop d4 hitting the pawn on f2. And well, probably something like queen e2 or queen f1 is necessary. Maybe queen f1 even because after queen e2 I just hit the queen again with rook e8, it doesn't help. So queen f1 I would suspect is best. After knight e4 I can probably just take on d5, I would guess. So um, queen f1 and now, uh, well, white is a little bit paralyzed really, the knight cannot move because it needs to protect the rook, so probably something like rook a1, yeah, it's all not pretty, it's all not pretty for, for white here. Can maybe move my knight back and this is this is looking great yeah. all right so rook takes d5 so just to illustrate real quick queen takes d5 fails due to this and checkmate and during the game i was also talking about the line queen takes f5 rook takes bishop h3 rook takes f2 takes but now i just take on d2 why does one back the exchange but in fact for example i can just win the exchange once again here, like that, and black is winning. So g4, takes, takes, rook e5, knight e4, and now I played f5, I'm not even sure how good this is. Um, I mean, it turned out well, but it's of course also weakening my king, especially if you're playing against two bishops, like I'm doing here, you don't want to open your king too much. It almost backfired, I felt a little bit here. Knight f6, king f7, bishop g5, defending against this threat, rook e1. Now rook e6, and here this, this is the last critical moment. Bishop d5 is just losing a piece. White needed to play, I believe, bishop h5 check. If the knight moves out of the way right away, And knight takes h7 can't be possible, it's just rook h8, picking up the knight. If the knight moves to, let's say, h5, then there's rook g8 and h6 winning the bishop. So black, or rather white, needs to play bishop h5 first, forcing the king to go to g7, kind of, because, well, I don't want to go to e7 and f8 also looks strange. And now the knight moves, let's say to d5, and now I don't have rook g8 right away. And white is still fighting on. Knight can come to f4, it actually still looks like a good amount of work here for me. Yeah, that's the way to go, to fight on. Of course, being up in exchange and a pawn and having a strong bishop on d4 is giving me more than sufficient um, material to win, but 
still against the two bishops. We both don't have that much time, right? Anything can still happen. And after that, yeah, I'm just up a knight and there's nothing I can do anymore. All right, that's it. That's the game analysis. And I hope this was helpful for you, Clarence. And for all of you other guys watching, I also hope that you could take away something from it. If you have any questions or if I, anything was unclear, just let me know in the comments below and I'll get to that. And then I see you again very soon. Goodbye.